So here are the five scariest new car features we should all hate. Paywalling already installed features. Whether it's paying a monthly subscription to use your heated seats that are already installed into your car, or paying a yearly subscription to use your navigation system even though it's already installed into your car, next thing you'll know, they'll make it where your car door won't even open unless you insert 50 bucks into it. It'll just have one of those vending machine dollar styled inserters or just a credit card reader. And when those items break, I bet you the dealer won't even fix it either. You'll have to pay to get them to fix just so that you can pay again to have them re your card so you can use your car. In the near future, key fobs will probably have zero use anymore, other than to remind the buyer of the false pretense of owning the car, an agreement they made of a dealership to store it in their garage instead of a dealership lot, because in actuality the car will soon own them. I hope kit cars will still be legal in the future because if companies keep reinstalling these garbage features or shove subscriptions down our throat, then boy am I just going to build my own car at that point, or realistically I'm probably just going to keep riding a motorcycle instead. To think car enthusiasts used to laugh at kit cars decades ago, but seeing as cars are becoming closer and closer to appliances that are featuring pay to drive mechanics, monthly battle passes, and daily startup fees, wait a second, are we talking about a gotcha game or some EA loot box cash grab? Hold on. This might just be a giant misunderstanding. Maybe they're just talking about video games. Nope. Nope. These are cars. No, I'm definitely reading the crap script for this video. And in fact, these are indeed definitely articles talking about cars from car journalists. These are not EA games or gotcha mechanics. These are cars. Cars are going to have battle passes. Just think of how stupid that is. Monthly subscriptions that are used to use things that are already on your car. Imagine trying to turn your AC in a hot summer day just to have your car ask you to swipe your credit card on the dash. I know some sheltered MF is probably thinking, oh, this just sounds like a poor problem. If you can pay a car payment monthly, then you can afford all these extra monthly payments. It's okay. And it's not going to get to that point anyways. It's just a few niche examples. That's the problem. The disgusting willingness of modern day consumers, the blinded acceptance. We really are repeating the laissez-faire American corporate era that happened just over a century ago. What happened to the customer's word is law? What happened to our power as consumers? People are just sitting down and letting them walk all over us. And the worst part is when the majority sits down and takes it, then us minority who are still car lovers, car enjoyers, because obviously we don't make up the majority of car drivers, most of them are non-car enthusiasts. What they accept determines what we receive as well. It is a slippery slope. It's becoming increasingly normalized for people to already pay $700 to $1,000 a month for car payments, then $300 more for monthly insurance, and now they're expected to pay monthly payments that are tacked on for their heated seats, their GPS systems. Don't think that the AC thing isn't next on the list, that it won't be ridiculous for cars to have built-in credit card swipers on their dashes. Don't think that it can't happen that dealerships, once they get away with doing what they're doing to us already with these heated seat transactions, there will be no limit. There's no satisfaction to their corporate gluttony. Doubtful? I've got bad news for you. Keep your eyes locked here because the rest of this video only gets worse. As you learn that some of these things you might consider yourself too smart to fall for might already be on your car. Making cars harder to repair. This is also a stupid futuristic feature that's marketed to people to just trick them into signing the rights away, basically. You'd think all these simple shaped, boring looking kitchen appliances would actually be easier to take apart their body panels. But as you can see, most of them have a distinct lack of separate body panels, trying to use as little as possible, or even just trying to be one piece designs. Sure, the artists call this clean, and the executive board members eat this design up when it's shown to them in boardroom meetings, but what the hell do us consume? consumers do? And what do the mechanics now have to struggle with? And guess what? Whatever the mechanics struggle with that the engineers design, we the consumers are the ones who actually foot up that bill. How do we fix our own dang car? And even if we are paying a mechanic, then obviously it's going to be up the wazoo for cost because of how difficult it is to even reach half the components in a lot of modern cars now. Again, this is something that's already on the slippery slope. It's already an escalation. The right to repair is quickly a dwindling right, as most cars are making it harder and harder for consumers to repair and for mechanics 
mechanics to repair even. And even if you could fix it as a consumer, I notice wait lists for parts gets longer and longer. So when you try to order your own parts to fix your own car, because of how complex and how many parts are needed to fix the smallest malfunction, you may wait two to three months on times just to even get your own car fixed by yourself. Because that's probably their way of bottlenecking you to use their inbuilt dealership services, which probably have priority for receiving parts. The worst part about this is these cars are hideous. Like, if, I, if you're gonna torture me with this, at least make the cars still look like cars or make them cool. But I already ranted about this in my previous video, so if you haven't watched my previous video, I highly recommend you go check it out after this one. I'm hoping that I can find some solace in the things I'm ranting about that maybe some of you guys can agree with it and also be like, no, Bladed, because this is indeed stupid. You're not hallucinating. Like, this is just stupid. It just seems like more and more people are just laying down, spreading their cheeks, and taking it from behind from corporations willingly and oh my goodness look if you enjoyed this video so far i'd appreciate you hitting like to help boost it share it with your friends and send them on a doom posting feels trip if you've been watching me for a while and enjoy my videos and subscribe if you haven't already i greatly would appreciate it but moving along though fake engine noises are another thing that absolutely upsets me like who are you all trying to a fool it's not gonna fly by us car enthusiasts right it's not like it even flies by non-car people because you know better than i they don't even want to hear any sound from their car car anyway, so who is this feature made for? Like seriously, just think about it, who is it made for? Even future generations of car enthusiasts who may never have grown up hearing the real sound of a V8, and oh god, that statement really just hit, like that's a pitiful future that that generation's going to meet, but anyways, even they'll still know that something is uncanny, out of place. I get it, electric cars don't make the same sounds as internal combustion engines. I'm not bothered by it, I'm just asking that they stop trying to masquerade as it. There are other cars that still make some noises like hydrogen powered cars, even hybrids can still make noises as well, and some electric cars just make a different kind of noise. Get rid of these tacky speakers, they just weigh the car down. A real performance car doesn't need more weight than it already has. Sports cars are already regularly approaching 4,000 pounds these days, it's insane. Even even for gas-powered cars, they still do these tacky fake speakers, so don't just think this is an electric car thing. We've already had a lot of, lot of gas cars that just use fake exhaust notes that are pumped into the interior through speakers, and it's just insanity, absolutely delusional, an asinine waste of development costs and R&D funds to just unnecessarily route electronics to just make us pay for what is essentially another lie, it's just another deception. The fourth feature that I am absolutely terrified, remote key start or starting your car from a phone app, however, was just never appealing to me. I do have remote key start cars and I don't always use it. And to be honest with you, I don't really mind if it wasn't there to begin with. I never connect my phone with it or sync with it because like all that does is if I ever get my phone stolen from me, they now have also effectively stolen my car as well. So I never ever bothered syncing my car up with my phone app. It just, it just seemed like a really, really big, just, ugh, like, don't get me wrong, remote key start cars are already decently easy to hack. Like, look, it's just software at the end of the day. Like, I went to university for this, and I'm telling you, I'm not some tin foiled wearing boomer, because as soon as 2019, and even it's a recently, it's only been getting more prevalent, actually, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, you will find plenty of videos addressing the weakness of keyless entry remote start cars or phone app-based ignition. If kids as young as nine are already hacking Minecraft, what's stopping Stopping them from growing up to hack something like a car. The technological prowess of the younger generation is quickly outpacing the understanding that older people have of these technologies, and that technological knowledge is only widening in the coming decades. Again, it's already happened, and plus if people can hack missiles, hacking a car is not that far off. And again, we are just kind of living in false comfort with these features, out of mutual trust we don't do it. But people will do it. Of course, cybersecurity has gotten better, but it's not impenetrable. Right now, I think cars are in the youth phase of the internet. Maybe over the years, better cybersecurity defenses will be developed for future incoming models, but right now, a lot of these earlier models are just like a gimmick, like the software gimmick of unlocking your car from a phone is very surface level with how it works, so it's very easy for hackers to hack it. There are literally videos online that show how remote key cars can be hacked by just two people 
people who can do it in literally like five to ten minutes. It's terrifying. The final thing that absolutely scares me about cars is dealership installed devices, kill switches or GPSs that feed your insurance company information. The even scare part of all the above features is that some states have legally allowed dealerships to use the same software that can be started via phone and whatnot to kill switch your car at any time, anywhere. So if you're behind on payments, they can shut off your car. I'm not defending people who are behind on car payments because that is kind of a responsibility issue and you shouldn't be buying out of your means. However, let's think about this from a employee perspective. People mix up orders all the time at restaurants. In fact, statistically, one of you watching this video right now is probably eating. And of those people eating, one of you probably got the wrong order today. And now you're just begrudgingly dealing with it and passing time watching my video. I'm glad you're here. Like I said earlier, leave a like. I'm sorry they effed up your food, but people make mistakes. That's just what happens at work. Having said that, what if some schmuck ran the numbers wrong, mixed up your name with someone else's, or maybe thought you were someone who's behind on payments when it was actually the guy who above you in the system, and they just looked too quickly, clicked on your name instead, boom, there goes your car. Now in the middle of the family road trip, stranded in the Texan desert, the kill switch just activated. And sure, you can call them and say a mix up happened, but thing is, it still happened when it shouldn't have happened. The more and more prevalent these things become, the more and more likelihood of it having wrong kill switch cases, where it's not always kill switching the person it was intended to kill switch. And really the way I feel about this is, it just shouldn't be on your car to begin with. I know that it's frustrating for dealerships to repo cars when people are behind on payments, but guess what? That's their problem. They're the dealership. I'm the consumer. Be charging us for their missteps, and we shouldn't be getting punished for their lack of wanting to spend extra money for it. And like the other features in this video, it also just snowballs. Once they can get away with putting one feature on your car, they put another. A lot of GPS systems or accident notification systems that are built into your car can also feed information to your insurance company, and your insurance company can request your lien holder for that information if you're driving stupidly. Even if you have the car fully paid off, your insurance company can still access that software if you still left it inside there, and that's just weird. Yes, of course, there are consent forms and many layers of things that you're signing, but people tend to gloss over them or just sign without fully thinking what they're signing slash agreeing to. A lot of insurance companies do this now. Like, this isn't even kind of sort of a thing. A lot of my friends that I know have devices on their cars that literally feed information to their insurance company, and they kind of already accept it. And then when they get something in the letter that says their premiums are getting raised because they were caught speeding 10 miles an hour the other day, which isn't even you know, that big of speeding, if we're being honest here. That's just creepy to me. That's not something you should take laying down. That's just actually creepy. Again, this isn't a tinfoil conspiracy. This is something that has already started to happen. And knowing how corrupt corporations and companies are, they will push it as far as they can go. As years go by, we will see further developments and even more oppressive technologies from them. If people don't fight back against this, then they'll just quietly slide it under our floor mats, right beneath our feet. This isn't just a matter of ha you're poor anymore because like I said they won't just shut down your car if you miss payments who's to say they won't start finding other reasons in the future where they can use that kill switch feature if I really had to buy a car right now I would buy a classic car and repair it from the ground up just to really make sure it doesn't have any of these dumb devices on it and never plan on it because any new modern car you buy these days it's so easy to just hide these anywhere that's part of the reason why I probably wouldn't even deal with a classic car I'd probably still again just stick with riding a motorcycle because there is so little space to fit these devices and they're such open vehicles you would see if one of these devices was on them. There's like almost nowhere for them to hide. But cars are so big, there's all these compartments and components. It's really easy to make someone not see something if you don't want them to see it as the manufacturer. So deep within your car panels, they're lurking, watching, tracking, and already on some of your guys' cars even watching this video. And maybe my schizophrenia is just finally escalating to paranoid state. Or maybe I really am peering into the precursor of a soon-to-be dystopian car ownership experience that is the future of cars. Though where there is oppressive, authoritarian, controlling, prying, and privacy violating software, there's also hardware that is running all that software in the first place. I'm not encouraging you to find those kill switches, or those GPS data loggers, or all the other software is preventing you and locking you out from using your heated seats, but if you want to find someone who can hack them, or if you maybe even just want to remove the hardware, I wouldn't be mad at you at 
at all, in fact. Legal disclaimer, this isn't something I condone nor take responsibility if any of you commit them. It's just a very, 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 very friendly suggestion is all. Having said that, thanks for watching and I hope I didn't make you look over your shoulder or now feel that your car is now being tracked while it sits in your garage because trust me, it already is. Just like how your phone also is listening in to you. If you love cars and automotive content, then make sure to subscribe and check out my previous video if you haven't. It's linked right here. Like this video if you enjoyed it and share it to your pet golden fantail. See y'all next time. Blade Angel out.